This is, let's say, the XY plane. It can rotate in the XY plane. And here's an axis, about an axis through its center. Two small beads, each of mass 0.1 kilogram, are held by catches at positions 10 centimeters on each side of the center of mass. OK, so here the rod has length L and mass M. And they are given. Now I have two beads. They're held at 10 centimeters from the center. So let's say that they're held at a distance, D. And there's, uh, again, another D. Where D is 0 0.1 meter. So they're held there. The system is set rotating at 20 radians per second at omega. which is 20 radians per second. And the caches are released. So they're being held. Now they're released. And the system is rotating. The beads slide without friction along the rod. So they move. They move to the end. What is the angular speed of the system when the bees reach the ends of the rod? So now it's still rotating, but what is the angular velocity? Now it's omega prime. Or you could say here omega i, if you like, and here omega f, or omega and omega prime. So this is the question. <clears throat> now, this is a situation where we have a, a system. The system consists of the rod and the beads. There are no external torques acting on the system. The system is rotating now. It's rotating with some angular velocity, omega. And the beads simply slide to the end. The beads do not slide because somebody from outside pushes the, the beads or, or pushes the rod or anything like that. So there's no, no external torque is applied. <coughs> this means that the angular momentum is conserved. It's the same initially and the same finally. The moment of inertia is I omega. I mean, the, this is the angular momentum. It's the moment of inertia times the angular velocity. This is the angular momentum about this point here. So the initial values, that's the initial angular momentum, this must equal the final angular momentum, which is IF omega. Now we are given, essentially we are given everything. All we need is omega. Or we are given information that allows us to determine everything. Omega i is given as 20 radians per second. 
the initial moment of inertia corresponds to the rod, and now the rotation is about the center of mass. So the moment of inertia of the rod, ii, is 1 over 12 ml squared. Plus, I have the moment of inertia of the two beads. Each bead has a mass little m. And it's at a distance d from the center. So each one has m d squared. So that's 2 m d squared. Now what is i f? It's still the same rod, so 1 over 12 m l squared. But now each bead is at a distance l over 2 from the center. So plus 2 m, and now d is no longer d, it's l over 2 now. So l over 2 squared. Keep in mind that this is big m, that's the mass of the rod, and this is little m, that's the mass of the bead. <coughs> now we have everything we need. Omega f is i initial, omega initial over i final. So you just, if you want to get numbers, you know, you, you may get questions like that. In fact, without numbers, just with symbols, then now you just multiply this i times omega i, which is given, and divide by if you're given numbers and you want to obtain a number, just calculate ii, get a number for that, get a number for if, put them here, and omega i is 20, and that gives you omega. Omega, is it less or more or larger? Is it greater or smaller than omega i? Clearly, it's less than omega i. Because IF is larger than II. IF is, is, you have the two Bs further away than, in the final situation, the two Bs are further away from the center. So the moment of inertia is larger. It's like when you spread your arms. When you spread your arms, your moment of inertia increases.